Welcome back to End Time Prophet Judge. My name is Pastor Mike Garcia. In a week or so, we'll start teaching on Hanukkah. But I'd like to uh, prepare us for that. I know last week we spoke about, uh, uh, the week before we talked about uh, living waters and whatnot. And as we move into Hanukkah, I'd like to just bring up some scriptures and whatnot and preparing us for Hanukkah. And uh, people that understand that Hanukkah is in the book of John, chapter 10, verse 22 and 23. And Yeshua does honor it. And uh, as we, as prophet judges, if you are, I don't expect everybody in the world to like this class. As a matter of fact, most people don't. They reject it. But for the people that want to be called great in the kingdom of heaven, it's a narrow path that you must, must take. Um, let me start off with Job chapter 1, verse 1. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and escheweth evil. Now that is also spoken in uh, verse 8. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? There is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. <clears throat> now, that word perfect mean, is uh, tom, upright, okay, it means to be straight, righteous. He feared God, feared God, reverence, to have reverence for the Lord. Now, sometimes when you come to the Lord first, you know, you're maybe hiding under your table. Huh? But then as you develop a relationship with the Lord, you reverence Him. You don't want to sin because you have now developed a relationship with the Lord. The people, the 12 tribes, they told Moses, you go up to Mount Sinai and you talk to God. He scares us. You speak for us. And that's how it usually is when you first come to the Lord. You're grateful. You thank Him for cleansing you from all your sins. But you're a little afraid of Him also. But that fear that you might have in the natural becomes reverence and honor and respect for the Lord. It's still under fear, but there's a different definition for fear. And we'll get to that in a second. And it says, and he eschewed evil. <clears throat> eschewed, that means to turn away. To, to avoid, to turn aside. And um, let me just read a couple of scriptures. Give you a little foundation. Second Chronicles chapter 19, verse 9. And he charged them, saying, Thus shall you do in the fear of the Lord, faithfully and with a perfect heart. Job 28, 28. And unto man... He said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Okay, depart from evil, escheweth, avoid it. If you see evil walking this way, you walk out that way. Okay? That's wisdom. You don't try to combat it. I knew of people that would go to a bar and try to hand out tracks. Okay, that's, uh, how should I say this? That's stupid. Okay? The Lord will bring the people to the church. The Lord will bring them here. He'll bring them to you. You don't have to go into a bar or someplace that you can fall because you're not strong enough, or even better, not wise enough to eschew evil, to avoid evil. Let's look at Psalm 19.9. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Psalm 34, 11. Come, ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Psalm 111, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, a good understanding. Have all they that do his commandments, his praise endureth forever. Proverbs 1, 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. And remember one of the, the definitions of Torah, it's just not just a law, but it's instructions and teachings. 
and people that reject the Lord's teachings, the Torah, and that's exactly what his people did. The judges were to teach and instruct his people the Torah, and they rejected him. That's why the Lord told, told uh, Samuel, they're not rejecting you, they're rejecting me. They're rejecting the word of God. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's what fools do. You saw the kings, uh, uh, the, the 12, uh, 10 northern tribes and two southern tribes. Okay, none of them were doing the right thing. Yeah, David made a massive mistake. Okay, yeah, he got on the right path. But all of them did, did the evil in the sight of the Lord. Because they thought they knew better than the Lord. Because I gave you judges, but you want kings. That's why we should embrace what the Lord has given us. Our inheritance is the Torah. We should embrace that. It drives me nuts when people say, well, you're, so, you're supposed to, when you come to the Lord, you should read the New Testament first. How can you possibly understand and get strong through the New Testament when the Torah is the foundation for the New Testament? When Jesus, and, and if I repeat myself, this isn't a class or teaching to inspire you, it's to teach you, educate you develop you in your daily walk with the Lord to take on the the wiles of the enemy because that's what it is it is truly spiritual warfare uh, Proverbs 129 for that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord Proverbs 2 5 then shall thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God Proverbs 8.13, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy, and the evil way, and the forward mouth do I hate. Proverbs 9.10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Holy, kadosh, kadosh, kadosh. That's what holy is. You, you need to live that straight. You need to live an upright, holy separated lifestyle from the things of this world. Uh, Proverbs chapter 10, verse 27, I believe we're at. The fear of the Lord prolongeth days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. I believe last week we talked about Caleb, we talked about Joshua, we talked about Moses, and the spirit of Caleb, the spirit of Moses, that those are the scriptures, what those scriptures said. That Moses lived 120 years old, which isn't the miracle. The miracle is that his eyesight was not dim and his strength was not abated. The same that go, goes with uh, with Caleb. I don't know how old Caleb, how long Caleb lived, but at 85 years old, he was as strong as he was when he was 40. There's no reason for us to become feeble. That's why the Lord tells us in in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 31, to examine ourselves, examine the way we live, examine our lives before we take the body and blood of Christ. Now that word prolongeth uh, in Proverbs 10, 27, prolongeth means to increase, probably add to. So when you're being obedient, the Lord will increase the days of your life. Proverbs 14, 27. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. Depart, that also means to eschewth. You want to avoid evil. A fountain of life. It's funny how people keep wanting that, that uh, elixir that gives you long life. It's right here. This is the elixir. Be obedient in the fear of the Lord. And he has given us that promise. <clears throat> Proverbs 15, 16. Better is little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure that troubles therewith. Proverbs 15, 33. 
The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. If you're going to serve the Lord, you have to be humble. It's just a natural instinct when you serve God, when you love God with all your heart and soul and strength and mind, you will naturally become supernaturally humble. Understanding what a great miracle he really did in your life, whatever it is. Proverbs 16, 6. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. When you start living that lifestyle of truth, through the spirit of truth, as we worship Him, God is spirit, John 4, 23 and 44, uh, 24, God is spirit shall be worshipped in spirit and in truth. Now most people, before they come to the Lord, they live a life, a life of lies. Satan is the father of lies. Okay? And when we're not with the Lord, we're with Satan. And we live a lie. Our life is a lie. But when you start living with the Lord, serving the Lord, and when I say serving the Lord, I don't mean you have to be a pastor. Okay? Or a teacher. It's how you live your life is how you serve the Lord. <clears throat> Verse 19.23, I mean Proverbs 19.23, the fear of the Lord tendeth to life, and he that in it shall abide satisfied, he shall not be visited with evil. Proverbs 22, 4. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. And I'm going to leave with this one. Proverbs 23, 17. Let not thine heart envy sinners. But be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. Let me read that again. Let not thy heart envy sinners. You know, I think that's the biggest struggle I have in church, is people, when they come to the Lord, instead of wanting to submit to God, they look at what their friends were doing. Does that mean, Pastor Mike, I can't eat pork? I can't eat this? I can't go to the football game. I can't go here. I can't do this. I can't do that. And I tell them, you could do whatever you want. They, they envy what the sinners are doing. They envy sin. I have a sign here. It says, try Jesus. If you don't like him, the devil will always take you back. If you want the Lord, you want the Lord. The Lord has told you. He says, be ye therefore holy as I am holy. Be ye therefore perfect as I am perfect. He will never tell us to be perfect. It was impossible. He's told us and he's given us a pathway through, through Job on how to be perfect. Fear God and avoid evil. Very simple. I am the uh, facilitator for domestic violence, victims and batterers and in, I'm in my office today, not at the sanctuary, and um, I questioned my class. There was a couple of women in there, batterers and, and men, and I asked each one of them how much they loved their family. And of course they said they loved their family. And I said, would you kill to defend your family out of love? And they all said yes. They didn't bat an eye. Then I said, would you kill the person next to you, would you kill his family to defend your family? And all of them said yes. One of them wavered and said maybe not. So it was established that they would kill to defend their family. They would even kill this person's family to defend their own family. I said great. No, I knew most of these people. They've been in my class for a while. I said okay, we have established that you will kill to defend your family out of love. And I said would you give up smoking for your family. Oh my God. Would you give up cussing out of love for your family? Would you give up drinking out of love for your family? Would you give up smoking weed out of love for your family? Oh, they said, oh, those are tough things, Pastor Mike. Think how ridiculous it was. They don't kill for their family, but they won't give up cussing. They won't give up smoking. They won't give up yelling at their kids. So, where is the love? 
what truly is the love? I have two pictures here. One, I believe, is my daughter, probably, I think, in the second grade. And another one, she's probably about a year old. My daughter's in her 40s now. Uh, right now, this is Los Angeles. It's about 5 after 7. There's nothing in the world that can stop me right now from going to a bar right now. There's nothing stopping me from going to a bar and trying to get laid, have sex. Except I choose not to. For several reasons. Number one, over the years I have developed a relationship with the Lord that I don't want to break Him, my relationship with Him. I have a love affair with the Lord. If I would have said that 23 years ago, I thought I was nuts. But I understand that every day you take a step closer to the Lord, you also take a step further away from darkness. As you walk to the light, you walk away from darkness. And you don't want anything to do with that. The other thing is, if I went to do what I wanted to do in the flesh, I would open up a door onto my daughter and my grandsons, and maybe I'm not looking at her picture when she's 40, in her 40s. But I look at her every day when I look in the, open the drawer and I see her as a little kid, second grade, I think a year old here. And if I went to go do what I wanted to do, I literally would say, Satan, have your way with my daughter, have your way with my children, have your way with my congregation. Because they don't understand spiritual warfare. A handful in my church do. But that would be the most selfish thing in the world to go do what I wanted to do and let the innocent fend for themselves. And that is where you make a decision to depart from evil. Last week we spoke about how uh, Rehoboam uh, set up a church in Dan and Bethel. He goes Rehoboam, Rehoboam or Jeroboam. To make it convenient to worship instead of Jerusalem, where they were supposed to, the ten northern tribes. And I, I had mentioned this. I said when they did it, they did it out of convenience. And when you serve the Lord out of convenience, you become complacent. You start corrupting yourself. You become comfortable and you compromise your promises to the Lord. And you start easing through, well, it wasn't that bad. Well, God knows my heart. A bunch of crap. Our job is to serve the Lord 100%. Not veer to the left, not veer to the right. Casting down all imaginations and bringing every thought to the obedience of Christ. Think about that every thought. That means you're on guard serving the Lord 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Your body may sleep, but your spirit man doesn't. You have to train yourself. Submit therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. It's a battle. And it's a battle that you can win. But it's a battle that you have to deny yourself. We're going to be speaking about Hanukkah soon. About the Maccabee, the, the Maccabean revolt. Judah Maccabee and their family. They rejected the Hellenistic uh, teachings. They rejected the Greek teachings. And they said, no, we are not going to come against our God. We're going to stand for our God. And we're going to fight. And that's what we have to do. And I believe that what these teachings will develop people one by one. It's not going to be hundreds of thousands, but one by one. The younger generation and the people of my generation, if they like, to turn and to fight the wiles of the enemy. Not through just going to church, but to deny themselves and pick up the cross. Even though Hanukkah, or the Feast of Dedication, is not in Leviticus 23. 
in John chapter 10, verse 22 and 23, um, we know that Jesus honored it because it says, and Jesus walked in the porch of Solomon for the Feast of Dedication. So Jesus definitely honored it because they rededicated this temple back to the Lord. Now that's what Hanukkah is about. But we know also through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, while we honor Hanukkah during this time on the 25th of Kislev, we can rededicate ourselves to the Lord anytime. That temple, it was the temple that's rededicated. And we'll teach about that next week. But, in the meantime, understand that you have to make a stand against the evil. You have to make a stand against the devil. Or, live by the flesh. But remember, being joint heirs in Christ Jesus. He has taught us how to die to the flesh. If we're joint heirs in Christ Jesus, we're not just talking about the kingdom of heaven. We're talking about dying on the cross, crucifying the old man and resurrecting the new man. If you truly are born again unto the Lord, you can't keep doing the same old stuff easy barometer or litmus test is this. If you keep doing the same old stuff, I don't care how many prayers you say. How many salvation prayers you say. If you keep doing the same old stuff, you're not born again. You have to live a different way. Amen?